Tonight, we begin an investigative series diving into the history of mass shootings in Texas as tragedies like Midland, Odessa, El Paso, and even one north of the Red River in Duncan today remain fresh on people's minds. Yep, the series takes us back 40 years, and we begin tonight with the 1980 shooting in Dangerfield. My three children, they were my world. I had two girls and a boy. Gina was the oldest. She was just always a happy little girl. to church that morning. Gina was on the back row. I was on the usher's pew. Gary was a deacon there in 1980, and I taught Sun School at that time. We probably had close to 300 people in the sanctuary that day. We were, we were packed. And so we were in the midst of singing, and then all of a sudden, he come through the doors, screamed out, this is war. It was being broadcast, the church service was being broadcast, so people started calling the police department and said something's going on at the First Baptist Church. I heard pop, 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 like firecrackers, and I looked around, and it was a man with a gun, and he had on a helmet, camouflage-type clothing, dress like a soldier, really, and uh, shoot him. We were just trapped, helpless. And there were people down, and of course, little Jane Lina just shot. A bullet got her right in the temple, and it come out between her eyes. And I got up and ran over there to her, and I shook her. I gently pulled her to me, and um, I was patting her telling her it was going to be okay. But when I looked under the bench, I saw her brains. And I knew it wasn't going to be okay. Our pastor, our associate pastor, started, he told people, get down, get down. Everybody, please sit down. Please sit down. The ushers interrupted him because one of them grabbed a gun barrel when he was shooting back there. Fortunately, thank the Lord that Chris Hall jumped on his back. Chris being, the, he was a great, great running back at Dangerfield on one of the state championship teams and athletic. Chris was fast. Chris was very fast. They broke through the set of doors right, you know, they entered an auditorium, wrestling, hit the floor, shots began to ring out. Red McDaniel and Kenneth threw it. Two giants of men headed down the aisle. Red McDaniel grabbed him and a bear hug. Their momentum carried them out and actually busted the two exterior doors. He shot Red five or six times while well, all that, he didn't turn loose of it. When they hit the ground outside, the pistol bounced, you know, a few feet away. I had gotten up and was headed back that direction. Kenneth dove on him, but just before he got there, he was able to grab a gun and shoot Kenneth. Mr. Truett was laying right here, and Red McDaniel was, was laying over there, and Red never opened his eyes, never said, you know, a word. He didn't, he didn't say anything. And then I, I talked to Kenneth Truett and asked him, was there anything that I could do? I did take my coat off and put under his head. He just kept saying, Junior, it hurts. Mr. Truett, he didn't make it to the hospital. So five people were killed. And 10 more wounded. Without the heroism of those men, we were all sitting ducks. That's the thing that will stay with me till the day I die, that 
that those men laid down their lives for us. And just such a wonderful example of good, such a terrible example of evil. Satan's not afraid to walk in. That day when he entered, it was darkness, cold, you could smell death. Who did it? Why? I want to know.